I'm now going to uh, jump to slide 10 here where the review of multimedia principles so far starts and uh, I want to look at some examples and decide which principles are being applied or vi violated of the four that we've talked about fo so far, multimedia, contiguity, modality, and redundancy. Um, so here's a how breaks works example and a contrast between uh, words alone here. I see all this description of the brakes, uh, hydraulic brakes use various fluids and here are some descriptions of connections internally and connections externally. Alternatively this is a, a version with an image um, and associated text and note that there's a lower volume of text here so that's uh, often a a nuance on this decision. Um, uh, can you reduce the text because you don't have to describe uh, some of the things that are apparent in, in the visual here, right? Um, so which are the which principles are being applied uh, and which of these do you think is better? So I hope you've been thinking about that. You can even stop the video and think some more if you want. Uh, but you should note that, of course, the multimedia principle is at work because here we have an image and here we don't. And, and it's importantly, uh, if one started this with this, it would, you, one would want to recognize that there's a process being described that could be illustrated uh, by having images both about what the hydraulic brake structure looks like, right, um, as well as images that are meant to indicate processes. and. In this case, it might be even better, by the way, that if you had a series of images showing uh, what the brakes look like when they're being, before they're being applied and after they're being applied, and maybe how the fluid flows and so forth. And as I'm doing this, um, by the way, what am I doing? Which principle um, is this? Right, that's contiguity and, and modality. I'm talking, uh, you're hearing my narration over this and I'm pointing as I'm talking. So that's contiguity, but because I'm talking, these words are not appearing here. That's also modality and it's uh, avoiding redundancy because the, the words I'm saying aren't here. Uh, so uh, here's another example um, uh, how a bicycle pump works. As the rod is pulled out, air passes through the piston and fills the area between the piston and the outlet. Uh, valve. As the rod is pushed in and the inlet valve closes, the piston forces air through the outlet valve. So this is explained in audio alone, explained uh, with audio and graphics. What if we add the graphics? What, what principle has worked here? You might be tempted to jump to multimedia because, uh, sorry, modality because we're talking about audio. But that's not right in this case because the contrast isn't about audio. Audio isn't present in both. The, con the contrast is the introduction of graphics. So which principle is that? Well, that's the multimedia principle, right? Saying adding graphics, right? Um, now this particular intervention does incorporate correctly the modality principle because this text is not being placed on the screen. It's being uh, given in... in uh, in words, uh, and furthermore, I guess the not being placed on the screen is the redundancy piece that is also redundancy principle is well applied here as well. Well, there are limited uses of text here, right? But it's, uh, um, oh, actually, no. Let's take a closer look at this. My mistake, almost, <laughs> caught it. Um, this is the exact text, right, as the rod is pulled out air passes through the piston, so uh, this has a redundancy issue. Maybe you want to limit that, right, um, and have the audio uh, uh, doing this. So what about contiguity? This has spatial contiguity between the on-screen text, right, and the components of it in a very nice way, but if you were to, but this is a violation of redundancy because the words are here. Uh, um, right, rather than just spoken. How would you get contiguity with uh, with uh, the 
redundancy principle being correctly applied by leaving this text out? How do you get the words uh, aligned with the relevant parts of the image? Well, you can do what I'm doing with this pointer, right? So the audio, there be, this is off, right? There's no on-screen text, but the, uh, the audio would be saying, as the rod is pulled out, air passes through the piston and fills the area between the piston and the outlet valve as the rod is pushed in. Sorry, I shouldn't be pointing there. That's not there, right? Redundancy says don't have it there. As the rod is pushed in, uh, the inlet valve closes. Right Here it's open, here it closed. Uh, and the piston forces the air through the outlet valve. Right. So uh, I hope you, you see how my pointing with the audio keeps your eyes focused on the right thing. Right. I guess if I was doing this, I might go back and review. Uh, the key idea is like, if you don't get these valves right, you pull it up, the uh, air sucks in here, you push it down. Uh, actually, they're, 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 uh, uh, I think this is particularly important here as we're pulling up, there's a way for the air to get in, right? Uh, um, but if you're trying to, say, push air into a, a bike tube and you pull up and air comes in this way, it'll pull it out of the... Uh, uh, the inner tube or the wheel, uh, a tube inside of a wheel that you're trying to fill up, right? So it's really critical that the air comes from this side, not from this side, when you're filling this up. Whereas you want the air to go out this way, not out this way when, when you're pressing it down. Uh, so that's, the, uh, that's my elaboration on that instruction. Uh, now you know more about bicycle pumps. But, uh, but you know, reflect on how... Uh, having the audio and the pointing at the same time can help you uh, more effectively engage in generative and, and essential processing and engage in less uh, um, extraneous processing by, by moving your eyes around. Uh, so here's another contrast uh, where narration is presented separately from animation. Uh, Suppose you click on how the heart works in an online encyclopedia and two buttons appear, a speaker button indicating that you can listen to a short narration. Uh, so that's click here to hear a description um, about the four steps in a heart cycle and a movie button indicating that you can watch a short animation as illustrated uh, here. Uh, right, click here to see an animation. Uh, then you click the movie button, watch narration showing the four steps of the heart cycle. You might think this is an excellent presentation because you select them which mode of presentation you prefer. You might the, like the idea that you listen to the explanation first and then watch, or vice versa, thereby giving you um, where the vice versa is that um, you watch and then listen, thereby giving you two complementary exposures to the same scenario. So what's wrong with this situation? Right? Well, let's try to process this a little bit more closely here. So we have blood circulation through the heart. The human heart is an amazing organ. It can efficiently pump uh, deoxygenated blood from the body through, uh, through the chambers and into the lungs for reoxygenation. So if we were to click here to hear a description or click here to see the animation, we have some flexibility, right? So you're going to click here and see the animation, right? Look at it, and then go back here and click here to hear the description, the audio. So what's wrong with this? And can you describe what's wrong in terms of uh, one of the one or more of the four principles? Well, I hope you're thinking contiguity, right? Because then now we have this the image is separated, and the audio is separated. You can't process the two at the same time, and at some level, even the multimedia effect is, is, is violated because while they're both available, um, they're not available at the same time, and that, that ability to process both the, uh, the words and the image at the same time is key toward uh, allowing you to you know, do the sense-making, the generative processing 
of, for the learner to do the sense making and generative processing to bring the two together and to create better long term memory uh, representations of an understanding of the domain. Uh, so the problem is that when a lesson separates corresponding words and graphics learning, learners experience a heavier load on working memory, leaving less capacity for uh, for deep learning. Right? They're presented separately. It's not a true multimedia um, um, uh, 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 application of the principle, and nor does it have the kind of contiguity that you can bring the elements of the words together with the image, uh, um, the and and certainly you know arrows if. Uh, or, or pointing during uh, narration are, are, would be better ways of doing this that would engage in uh, using contiguity. Um, here's text and graphics separated on the so scrolling screen, again, a violation because you, uh, you're not able to do the kind of productive cross-modal processing or cross sort of content processing, actually, because it's on-screen text, it's not cross-modal, but it's harder to, uh, it's even harder to uh, jump back and forth. There's a lot of extraneous little, uh, processing produced by needing to scroll back and forth. Uh, it's better to have text and graphics visible together on a scrolling screen, and that's certainly possible. Uh, visual text, uh, here's a visual with, described with on-screen text. Uh, so uh, limited on-screen text might be okay, but certainly this is a violation of uh, modality, there is no uh, um, uh, narration, it would be better if this was narrated and according to redundancy leave this out, but you can keep that because that's limited text. Uh, so here we go, we moved the on-screen text into audio um, as a way of uh, implementing the modality uh, principle without uh, it could be the modality principle if you left this here and added it, but it's both modality and redundancy when you uh, both add, uh, remove the text and add the audio. Um, it's not a violation of redundancy to have some limited text here. Um, and in fact, this is a, a good but perhaps limited uh, illustration of contiguity. And again, a better one would be that the uh, as the audio is being read, written, there's some pointing going on. To keep a cell value in a copied formula the same, um, so this is maybe the formula you're copying, and you're going to copy it here. See, notice how I'm pointing in the two to it. That's contiguity, a uh, temporal contiguity. Uh, uh, you, there are some more examples here that you can look at and click on to here. You should test your understanding, ask yourself, how are principles being correctly applied, poorly applied, not applied? How can you make it better? What else would you want to know to best apply the principle? Uh, here's one where uh, there's this audio. Uh, that a galvanic cell is a spontaneous electrochemical cell in which electricity is produced by means of a spontaneous redox reaction. In this cell, zinc metal will be oxidized and copper 2 plus ions will be reduced. To complete the electric circuit, the solutions must be connected by a conducting medium through which the cations and anions can move. This requirement is satisfied by a salt bridge, which in its simplest form is an inverted U-tube containing an inert electrolyte, such as sodium nitrate or potassium chloride, whose ions will not react with other ions in solution or with the electrodes. So, um, what are your thoughts about principles here? Uh, so we have audio over the image, right? So that's good for modality. There's no extensive text on screen that's redundant with the uh, text in the audio, so that's good. Um, uh, what about contiguity? Let's see, there was a point here. Electricity is produced by means of a spontaneous redox reaction. In this cell, zinc metal will be oxidized and copper 2 plus ions will be reduced. So, zinc metal would be oxidized. When you first heard that, did you know where to look with your eyes? Um, uh, you know, if you knew Zn 
was linked, maybe your eyes would orient towards here, but you but you'd have to find that yourself, right? Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm just wondering if my pointer is working on top of this video. Uh, but if the video included pointing, that that would help you find where the zinc is, right? So that this could be improved by adding uh, the more contiguity. Um, uh, here's one where you might wonder Starting about with zero point split two zero zero attention. NO2. The reaction proceeds to where are your eyes with NO2 molecules combining looking. to form NO2 Are they looking in one place? At equilibrium, uh, the concentration. So uh, you have the opportunity to use your eyes uh, while you listen to the words because modality and redundancy are being well applied. But where are your eyes looking? There is motion down below here, and, and there is motion up above in the graph. Uh, so your, your attention is being split. Uh, how, how might you improve this? Well, one possibility is, is you know, to describe what's going on down here with only this image present and not this one, um, and then conversely uh, move to this image, maybe keeping this one here at the same time now that that one's been applied, but with some highlighting, you know, like pointing to focus attention on what's going on above and, and, and you know, help, help with interpreting this graph and what the motion means. And then finally, there is an important interconnection between the two. So uh, I believe uh, if I have it right, NO2 are these triples and, uh, and the two red ones, the one blue and the red, two reds. And then when they get combined, you're reducing the number of NO2s and uh, the combinations are increasing the number of N2O4s, two of the blue ones and four of the red ones. Uh, you know, so that's that that kind of mapping is going on, and, and and the animation itself is certainly good for showing you. Uh, well, let me let me back it up uh, a, a bit here to go to back to where those lines were still growing, right? Zero point two zero zero molar NO two. The reaction. Well, so actually, it's kind of subtle to notice, but there are, there's more combinations happening than there are separations. Um, there's definitely an interesting point at the end of this, which uh, many students get wrong. Not ceased. At equilibrium, the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal, and thus the concentrations of reactants and product. Uh, many students think the reaction stops out here, but in fact, What's happening is there, there's a swapping back and forth at an equal rate that doesn't, there's many uh, of the bigger molecules coming apart as there are smaller molecules coming together. And that's the equilibrium point. point. Um, I think if you watch that video, you might not get that key idea, even though it is expressed in here. And it could be better highlighted by more clearly noting uh, what, well, how these two things interact with each other how these two images are basically corresponding with each other. Um, so um, I invite you to do the same kind of processing with, with this video here. You can link yourself to YouTube and, and, uh, and watch. Um, would this have been better with still frames as a, as a point to consider? In fact, I think the discussion we just had about the last one is suggestive of, of perhaps some benefits of having some still frames um, and, and, and maybe even an ability to toggle forward and backward between the still frames to kind of make the point of what, what happened before and after. But notice how I stopped the video to give you a description at one state and then moved it ahead to give you a description at, at another state. Uh, so still frames actually, you know, animation is cool. It's maybe attractive, but still frames can often be more effective to get the point across. Uh, so, uh, I hope uh, uh, from this uh, 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 set of units um, that you've uh, got these learning objectives related to redundancy principles, 